So today I have the pleasure of talking to you guys about an ongoing project we're doing at Alberta Health on the topic of childhood immunization coverage at two years of age in the province. And we were using a 2008 birth cohort as the study population. So I'm just going to spin through the uh, background methods and results and then pass it off to Kim for the discussion. Uh, we have no relationships with commercial interests. So the main goal here was to test the feasibility of using administrative health and routine surveillance data to A, determine immunization status at two years of age, and B, conduct exploratory analysis of factors that may be associated uh, with the immunization. And the, the emphasis here was whether the data was complete, and if it was complete, uh, accurate, and, and it turned out to be. So just a quick refresher, since we were using a 2008 uh, birth cohort, this is what the immunization schedule will look like on the top graph there, the top chart. Uh, within the first two years, there were four doses of the DTaP and pneumococcal conjugate that finished at 18 months. And meningococcal was a three dose at 12 months, and then the varicella and MMR uh, were both one dose at 12 months within the first two years. And then when you put that together, uh, we get immunization status. And Traditionally, this is um, displayed as either completely immunized or, or not completely immunized. And we wanted to give a more descriptive outlook of this because we know that there's um, important differences and, and distinctions that should be made uh, among the non-immunizers. So just to define them, obviously our complete immunizers, uh, those are ones that received all the recommended dos doses of all the vaccines at two years of age. Opposite to this are the non-immunizers, and these are ones that uh, had no doses of any of the vaccines. And then the middle two groups were the interesting ones for us. So we have the incompleters. So those would be people who received at least one dose of a multi-dose vaccine, but did not complete it. And then selective immunizers were those who had no doses of at least one uh, vac multi-dose vaccine, uh, but completed uh, other vaccine series. So it's kind of hard to put your head around that first, but in a nutshell, uh, incomplete immunizers would be people who started vaccinating and didn't finish by the two years of, of what we uh, have on the schedule. And then the selectives would be people who um, opted out or, or chose not to for, for whatever reason uh, to get certain vaccines. But they had no vaccines that were um, partially complete. So the vital statistics and notice of birth uh, registry was what we used to establish the original cohort, which was 50,547. And then we use the Alberta Healthcare Insurance Plan to, to add in the exclusions of status first nation, death, and, and any of those who had health care coverage cancelled. And the coverage cancellation was predominantly due to uh, those moving out of the province. And then uh, we had a postal code registry uh, for some of our exposures that I'll, I'll get to later, and uh, exclusion of those who moved into Lloydminster at any point in the, uh, the two years uh, because of their unique situation where uh, public health can be accessed on both sides of the border. And so this left us with the final cohort of 44,213. And with that, we used the Amari um, the Immunization and Adverse Reaction to Immunization Repository to determine their immunization status. So here's a list of our exposures. Uh, two things to note here. Uh, they're all collected at the individual level, except for household income, which was from census data. And um, they're all collected at birth except for the hospitalization days and the number of moves within Alberta. So these were, uh, we looked at these concurrently throughout the, the two years with the postal code registry. And I'll, I'll get to these again at, at the, uh, the results section, so don't worry about them. And then on the outcome here, uh, this is what I went through before, so the four immunization status. So I'll start off with the, the individual vaccine, so we can see that the DTaP and, DTAP and pneumo, uh, both the 18th month uh, vaccines were 77% and 74% complete. And we have a relatively big group of people in the, the partial uh, for these two vaccines, so 18 and 20%. Um, most of these people were stuck on the, the third dose. And then the, the meningococcal uh, vaccine we had at 85%, MMR and varicella at 87 and 85, and these were the ones that were finished at, at 12 months. And then when you put that together, it uh, gave us a completion rate of 71% for our 2008 birth cohort at two years. 2% Two of the population were a selective, and then 22% were incomplete, so they were partially finished. And then about 5% had 
uh, no doses of anything, which is uh, consistent with what we see uh, from data from the other provinces. And then on the right side there, we have a, a map, so the proportion of complete immunizers uh, broken down into subzones. And what you notice here is that there's no subzone that had 80% uh, completion. And then the, the, the orange and red areas are, are the areas we should be a little more concerned with. So the orange being 60 to 70% completion and then the red at under 60%. And the, um, the top left quadrant there in the north zone, that actually had under 50% completion. So the, the factors here that, that are bolded were uh, the factors that had the most, uh, the, the largest effect on uh, whether or not they were going to be completely immunized or not. Uh, so the number of previous children at birth, so this is um, household size essentially, uh, maternal age, birth attendant, so whether it was a physician or a midwife, uh, marital status, this was just whether you're married or not married, uh, rural or urban setting, and then a uh, number of household moves within the first two years and income. And then the, the birth location, so home or hospital, gestational age, uh, delivery type, cesarean or vaginal, and uh, neonatal intensive care admission. These ones were significant, but the effect size were uh, a, a lot less than the bolded uh, factors. So I'll just give you a, a visual representation of, of some of these. So you can see there's a, a definite trend with a uh, number of children in the household at birth. So uh, this is proportion of complete immunizers. Um, so once you get to you know the fourth, fifth, and, and sixth uh, child, their likelihood of being completely immunized is, is below 60 percent. As we see this similarly with number of household moves within the first two years. So zero or one does, moves doesn't seem to really affect it, but when we get to two, three, and, and especially four, uh, we're down under 60 percent. We have a, an interesting uh, U-shaped curve here for maternal age. So we have uh, the young mothers uh, struggling to get their child immunized, and then it, it, completion peaks around 35 years of age, and then it dips back down uh, after 40 years of age. And then here we have uh, completion by uh, birth attendant and uh, geography. So the two important ones on the birth attendant were the physician and midwife. So the physicians, we were, we were about 70%, and uh, midwives, the completion rate at two years was uh, about 35%. Uh, luckily for us, only about 1.5% of the cohort uh, were delivered by a midwife. And then, for in terms of immunization, sorry, I don't want to <laughs> cross any lines here. Um, and then with, with the geography, so uh, children born in an urban area, so this was based on uh, the, the postal code of the, the mother at birth uh, had close to 70% or a bit over 70% and, and the rural uh, slightly above 60%. And I'll pass it off to Kim now. 